All right, what I'm going to be doing now is armor plate again. We see on the mouse here this grooved piece, these lines of just thick, heavy metal. And you can see how it's like a puzzle piece. So this is how thick the armor was on the front of the mouse. But I want to recreate that on my tank. And I figured this out not too long ago when I was doing the iron scrapper. Whoop, bumped the camera. Um, as you can see, I've done here. So I didn't really do a how I was doing it kind of film. So I've already cut and put one piece in place, which is here. Can't really see the detail because it's white, not painted, but there's etches through here. So what I do is I first lay out with the compass, a big circle, and then I cut it to fit this. Okay, and I've marked it. This is right side, left side's on there. Always mark stuff so you don't lose track. Before I cut the center out, it's I've just learned it's easier to scratch it first hand. So what I do is I just take the scratch all. Don't dig well, actually I don't take the scratch all, I lied. I take this tool, which is just something at the hobby shop. I use these things constantly. Push in hard enough to dent it, but not to cut through it. And pull it past the line in a pinwheel kind of movement, like so. And this gives that look of just jagged, raw steel, you know, just heavy armor. Something that would repel incoming shells from the Mobat, or in my case, what I really think about is, um, well, hell, I can't think of what that's called. The uh, late war G.I. Joe tank. Molar. <laughs> this is great because I can't really edit that out that I screwed that up. And you see that I'm just doing this. Just, and this is going to give that jagged, just raw, heavy steel armor plate. And again, didn't I didn't cut through it. I, mean, I don't know how easy that's going to be to see. I just pressed into it. I've also found, too, that for armor plate, and actually most cases, it's better to use the shiny side of the uh, cardboard as opposed to the rough side. The more I do this, the more I learn. I'm trying to share it as I go along. I do hope that people are enjoying this. Now this I'm going to freehand because I should have pre-drawn it with the uh, compass before I cut it, but it slipped my mind. So I'm going to freehand it. This is freehanded, but the compass should have been done first. Okay, I freehanded the uh, inner circle. I'm going to cut it with an X-Acto knife. And this just represents just heavy steel in the front of the tank. Notice I've got a cutting mat. So I don't cut into my table. Okay, didn't go all the way through. So there we go. We've got that. See the grooves? I know it'll show up better when it's painted. What I'm going to do now is take this fine grit sandpaper and just make sure that that cut is clean. Okay. And where that's going to go is right here. And this gives you the idea of how thick this armor would be right here. And the armor that's facing enemy tanks. Okay. So we do a little 
little bit of Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. You can see it already actually before I decided to do this, I had filled these gaps in with drywall. I changed my mind and decided I needed more detail. Added armor plate here, which I'll put rivets in there. This one is be a, just a brute from the front. Okay, that's glued. The super glue gel glues or dries just that fast. I've got just a little bit of a lip there. Sandpaper again. Make that flush. So now let's get the illusion that this is a second bigger piece of metal when it's painted that will look like this. See how that just really just adds to the brute force of these vehicles. <laughs> 